Um, it was a, it had a lot of um, a lot of points to it that needed to be addressed. And I wanted to start off with saying a lot of the times during public comment, the board and the solicitor, solicitor office remain silent because that's the time for our public to speak. It's their opportunity to voice their concerns on the issues that are on the agenda. It's prudent for supervisors and staff to not interrupt a public member. However, when we're being pressed for answers on questions, that we have not researched or we don't have accuracy on, we remain silent. And we feel that's in the best in, in, interest of the township until we get our facts and present answers that make sense and are correct, truly correct. Unfortunately, um, a lot of allegations are made, oftentimes in some of these public comments, and the statements that are being made are simply not true, and it's, it's to a detriment to all of us sitting up here, our personal reputations are always at stake, um, and it's usually followed by social media posts, which were which are equally as damning, and um, we're forced to have to answer that, whether here or elsewhere, and we will be doing that. Um, but for the purposes of this meeting, for the purposes of brevity, I do want to touch upon a comment that was made at the last public, and unfortunately, most of the public left after the issues that they were interested in on the agenda were over, so they never heard the truth. So one of the comments were that the board had never, um, can, the resident says, can you tell me why I cannot find meeting minutes that authorize sweat law offices and the board to um, commit to hiring Braybender cops? So I can't answer why that person couldn't find it in the minutes, but they are in the minutes. And it was September 17th of 2020, motion to authorize sweat law offices to enter into professional service agreement with Braybender Cox to rend render consulting services for website de design, community outreach, and social media management. We were pressed further on <coughs> questions on how did that benefit the township taxpayer. Well, I can answer that at the time we hired that firm, it was under the direction of a team of attorneys that none of us here wanted. We were sued in federal court, all personally, and as a township. Individual professionals were all sued in court. And it has cost the taxpayer hundreds of thousands of dollars. And the information thus far is we've won in court several times. It's now at the Third Circuit, and as things develop, the township taxpayer will be informed. And I've promised that, and as these, these lawsuits come to a close, you will be informed of everything, including some of these decisions, which were at the time being guided by attorneys. Because none of us here were ever sued federally by a pro se litigant or um, in state and federal court at the same time. So we needed professionals to guide us. Additionally, there was questions regarding the spending of um, $58,000 for a property, and it was the Banahaski property, and there was a client trust account that our solicitor had opened for purposes of this property. Now this property was um, being looked at by Union Township Board for Mingo well pads, or excuse me, Mingo sewage. Um, we are constructing under DEP consent, something that should have been done decades ago, but we are, are in the planning, almost to the planning stages of financing of a three to four million dollar sewage project for the residents of Mingo. And it should have been done again years ago. It's an awful living condition up there. And as part of that planning process, the Banahaski property was the property that the DEP had picked <laughs> to put a package plant that we are going to be constructing this year or the next year. Attorney Sweat's office had to open up a client trust fund for this purpose, and I'm going to turn over to Attorney Sweat so he can explain to the residents what exactly happened there. 